Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Recently, one of the viewers asked what are the five plants that I absolutely must grow every season? So uh, today, I'm actually going to answer that question and at the same time, show you some of the plants and also give the reasons why I grow them. So uh, we will start with arugula. So I've done a ton of videos on arugula and many people know how much I love arugula. But um, yeah, this is my all time favorite plants to grow and I absolutely must grow them every season in the springtime. And sometimes they go through uh, all summer too because I, I use them also for the flowers. So uh, these are arugula plants and I started them very early. Some started from last year, uh, uh, some over winter, which I will show you. They, they just live through the cold and uh, you know the freezing temperature and they're still alive until this season. So these are the ones that I just started this year so i just threw a bunch of seeds uh, that is exactly one reason why i grow arugula they produce a lot of seeds so you can collect and just grow every year without having to buy new seeds um, they produce a lot of seeds so i grow them you know like this here microgreen style and even allow them to grow to big plants and then uh, harvest seeds and also eat the flowers so you eat the leaves and then you eat the flowers once they start to bloom so here i have a raised bed full of arugula plants they're just absolutely delicious and beautiful they're also very easy to grow so that is the reason why i love this plant so let me show you more of my arugula plants so there under the tree you see i have a ton of arugula there just i just throw seeds all over the place and anywhere else that i have space i just throw seeds uh, because these are uh, cool weather plants so uh, they usually start up before anything can come out so i have a bunch of space in that time so i just grow them uh, until uh, i can i can move the other warm weather plants out so in the meantime it's still cool right now that is why they're still there and looking beautiful and here again i have more arugula and you can probably tell i love arugula <laughs> so they're just all over the place and then here under my tree again i have more arugula and then this raised bed here is full of arugula and guys i grow them very close together um, a lot of you know people that grow these that they space them out which is a good idea they will grow big and expand uh, but for me I have so much seeds that I grow them as microgreens uh, kind of kind of ways and so I just let them grow in very close proximity and then I I eat these baby plants because they are just so delicious at this stage they um, that nice and tender and just awesome in salads so i've been eating them in salads almost every single day for the past few weeks and uh, when you harvest them just you know you can just pluck a leaf like this and then they'll grow back um, but if you're lazy like me you just chopped a bunch of them and if you leave like an inch uh, of the bottom remain they will grow back so don't don't pull up the whole plant just cut it and then leave about an inch left and then uh, you see they're starting to grow back so as you go down the row uh, a few weeks later when you come back to this area this will be back to normal again so you get more arugula leaves and here we have more arugula look, look at how beautiful they are under the sun and then here are some more then I have a mixture of arugula and cress up in this raised bed here look how gorgeous they look and I grow multiple varieties of arugula rocket wasabi arugula and also the wild kind so uh, the ones that you just saw are just the regular rocket so let me show you the wasabi ones Here we are, these are wasabi arugula. They are just awesome plants. I love this variety because they taste like the, uh, the wasabi that you find uh, at uh, sushi restaurants. I think those are just horseradish with uh, food coloring to make them green. But 
this variety of arugula tastes exactly like that it has a nice kick to them and it's just wonderful and I don't grow a lot of these because really you cannot eat a bowl of this you just you know pick five or six leaves and then you mix them up with the other stuff and uh, if you eat a whole bowl of this it's almost like eating a whole bowl of um, a wasabi uh, I mean they're not as spicy but they do have that exact taste and also the reason why I love this variety is that it produces flowers very early so right now uh, this is the only variety um, that I started at the same time that produces flowers and so the bees will start coming and visit so which is a, a great thing you know you get these beautiful plants you can eat the flowers too um, but also because the flowers are just beautiful and then they attract the bees to the garden so I love growing them for that reason and so uh, let me show you the uh, the wild arugula okay here are the wild arugula so I started these a little later so um, I need to to split them uh, pretty soon because they're getting big so I, I just you know grow them all bunched together which is not a good idea so I will pull some out and put them in another spot but these are a little bit spicier than the regular arugula but um, they they can grow really well in heat as well which is a good thing and the leaves are really nice and delicious okay so next up my favorite plants to grow is upland cress these are just fantastic plants these are the ones that survived through three freezes that we had that, that's why they're much larger than the rest and uh, these are the baby ones here that I started this year so they're very easy to grow you can direct sow just throw a bunch of seeds everywhere and they will just come up and they will grow you can th grow them really close together and um, when they're around this stage right here the leaves are really nice and tender they do have a little kick to them a little bit spicy and uh, if you let them grow to full plant they grow like that these leaves are just awesome guys they they can get pretty big so let me show you you see they're, they're very similar to watercress except they can grow on dry land they don't require you know running water to grow uh, they do have a little bit of this uh, you know that spicy peppery uh, taste of watercress a little bit stronger but um they're much hardier and, and easier to grow so they can grow in the cool months all the way up into summer and sometimes they grow through summer as well it depends on the age of the plant and uh, they they don't bolt uh, too fast so you have lots and lots of leaves before they start to produce flowers so let me show you the flowers if you're interested in seeing them okay so here are the flowers of the upland crest they they do produce a ton similar to arugula and uh, the flowers are yellow they're very much like the mustard these are mustard right here they they look a, a bit like the i think they're in the same family so uh, the leaves are just fantastic. They, they, the more you harvest, the more they come back. So that's another good reason why I love growing upland crest. They taste great. They're very hearty. Um, they don't get a lot of pests. They do get like cabbage worms and stuff like that. And then occasionally aphids. But other than that, they're just really easy to grow. And uh, they just grow on their own. So you don't have to, you know, tend to them too much. And uh, you can eat the leaves throughout the whole season they the more you harvest the more they grow back okay next up we have uh, romaine I love grown romaines for so many reasons one is they are just delicious and you can use them in so many ways like in taco in salad lettuce wraps I mean you name it there's just all, all kinds of ways to use them and they're really nice and crunchy and delicious so I love growing them and another thing is they produce so much seeds that I uh, from one plant you will have thousands and thousands of seeds to uh, to collect at the end of the season so that you can grow them again over and over and uh, I grow them uh, as you know baby greens which I will show you shortly and also the seeds are so easy to start sometimes I, I don't even start seeds actually I don't start seeds anymore some of the seeds just drop into the grass 
or I just throw a bunch into a bucket and then I just wait and when they come up and then I, I split them and so uh, they're also so easy to grow in hydroponic guys so I will show you some of the hydroponic lettuce as well and uh, they're just so easy to grow they take 30 days and you get a full head of lettuce and if you just harvest uh, you know single leaves at a time just harvest the outside leaves you will have lettuce for like a month or more after they're fully grown so let me show you the baby greens that I grow okay so here are the baby lettuce the baby romaine and so I just grab a, a handful of seeds and I just threw it in here during the winter time I cover the the container with a clear trash bag and put them in full sun and then they just grow and so I've been eating baby greens for the past month or so even longer and so uh, these are just so delicious and uh, you see how close I grow them and uh, you know just harvest the leaves just just pick a few leaves at a time like this they're so nice and tender and just such great plants and so that's what I've been eating for the past month as I mentioned and then from these I, I dug them out see there were more over here I dug them out and I placed them in the area that I just showed you and so you see you have uh, baby greens for a long time you can also grow them as microgreens you know in the winter time inside your garage or whatever with grow lights which I've done a bunch of videos on so make sure you check my channel and browse you know like lettuce or arugula there's so many videos that I've done on that already and so from this bucket let me show you some of the plants that I took out and, and then also I'll show you the plants that I took out of here for hydroponic so you see there those are the plants that I dug out of that bucket and I place them all over the yard. They're so easy to grow. They love cool temperature. And so they're one of the first few plants that I grow at the beginning of the season. And uh, I get greens all the way up until, you know, the temperature gets too hot and then they will produce seeds. And you see, so I put them pretty much everywhere inside the, the, the pear bucket and some more right here. And then of course you already saw that. Those are the ones that I, picked out of that bucket as well see back there inside with the arugula are the lettuce and then I, I plucked some out to put under here inside this raised bed look at all those beautiful lettuce and so romaine are just that wonderful plants that are just so easy to grow and uh, because they grow in the cool months there's not many pests that would uh, you know affect them so there you always see romaine look nearly perfect in my garden so they, they don't get attacked by cabbage worms or anything like that uh, even the aphids really don't seem to bother them at all they, they don't even go to the lettuce and so my romaine is always perfect looking and so let me show you some of the romaine I grow in hydroponic from the same batch okay guys so here they are look at this and I've made a video recently showing the time lapse of how I grew these from digging them out, digging them out of that little bucket. So look at that. This is the um, the botanium, which I did a video on as well. Look at how beautiful that lettuce is. And this is a DIY, which is a one gallon bucket that I created. And I grew it side by side, same exact thing. Beautiful result. And that over there, look at how beautiful those are. They're so big. They're much bigger than the one in the ground and they're the same age. So in hydroponic, they grow really, really fast. And also there's always nutrients available. So that is why they're always enormous in hydroponic. I forgot to show you guys the um, arugula flowers. So these are arugula flowers and you can eat these as well. So I have been eating it. You see, I plucked them off right here. So every time you, you you just, you just feel them right here so they're nice and tender at the top so if you feel down here they're kind of tough so you pinch them up here so when you pinch them each node will have more flowers come back so you'll get flowers for like a few months and these flowers are just so delicious guys they taste uh, like a little like arugula but they do have a, a bit more of a kick but they're just so good and the more you you harvest these flowers the more they will they will grow back which is an awesome thing about arugula okay next up we have sorrel and I grow sorrel every year it is a must in my garden because we love sorrel uh, one reason is they are so easy to grow uh, 
Another reason is they are perennial. So they'll die when they're freezes. If there are no freezes, they, they'll just stay alive throughout the whole year. So if they're freezes, like we had this year three times, with ice and everything, snow and whatever, it doesn't matter, they will just die back at the top and then they'll come back. Look at how beautiful these are. So I grow two different varieties. These are the uh, common sorrel and I think these are the French sorrel. And you can see, see the leaves are much different. They're smaller. Uh, I actually like the, the little ones more, but the larger ones are amazingly, they're much tender, more tender than, than these and uh, they just grow so much leaves and the more you harvest again as i mentioned that's why you, you, you can see why i love these plants now the more you harvest the more they grow back and uh, they don't uh, they don't bolt very fast so they do love the cool temperature so during the summer they will get uh, the leaves will get a little bit uh, rough but then you pull the old leaves out and then the young leaves will grow and then you eat those same with these here they're just so fantastic they have a lemony flavor and look at this you can use them in in lettuce um, you can use them in spring rolls the Vietnamese spring rolls oh man they're just so awesome um, I have another variety which I'm going to show you here it is this other variety is called the red vein sorrel and the red vein are really beautiful looking but they are kind of tough if you let them grow too big. Like, you know, once they get bigger than this, the leaves are kind of tough and it does have a little of a bitterness towards the summer. So when you get into like 80 degrees Fahrenheit, <laughs> that plant is mostly bitter. Um, and so I love these more. They're just nice and tender and, and it has better flavor. And it doesn't have the rough texture of, of this. But you know, a combination of these two, uh, you know, in your salad bowl, the presentation is just amazing. So uh, yeah, sorrel is another one of those plants. All right guys, so next thing that I love to grow and I absolutely must grow them every year is aloe vera. And the reason I love aloe vera is because they are so easy to grow. Um, they produce a ton of little babies so one plant you can have like 40 to 50 plants like very very soon after that and so um, aloe are like those plants that you can just grow around just leave them around just in case I eat them by the way uh, but also you know I use them for sunburns and minor cuts and stuff they're just fantastic and also you can use them you know on your skin if you like to in your hair there's many uh, ways to use them but I just eat these. I have a video on how I use these, the, the aloe gel and stuff like that. And they're just the, one of the most amazing plants that I always must grow. So I divided the plants and I put them here. So I put them all over the yard. So these are, I have uh, three varieties. So that one there is one, the Barbadensis Miller Stockton, which um, I bought from the Aloe One company. And these here are the ones that I have been grown uh, in our family for yeah, I think over 15 years I don't know the the exact variety name but the leaves are much flatter than um, the other Barbadensis Miller and uh, they don't have that crazy bitterness like the rest of them as well they grow thinner the, the, the flesh is also crunchier which is uh, really nice I love them it is my favorite so I grow them all over the place so I'll show you uh, what they look like when they get bigger so here is the one that I mentioned that we've grown, been growing this in the family for like 15 years already. Uh, they do get enormous, but the leaves are very flat and also they don't, they're not bitter, which is great. I love it. So here, you see, so I just took them out of the, the garage. So that's why they're kind of like getting used to the sun again. But after a few months, these leaves are going to be enormous. They, they grow really, really big. And then they produce a ton of little babies. So let me show you all of the babies that I have so far. So here are uh, some of the babies that I separated and I placed there. So I just put them, you know, randomly everywhere that I have space. See, here is a, a few more that those are also the babies that I, I split. 
and then here is a larger one you see it's these are the sun damage so if you grow aloe and uh, if you place them inside your house for like a few months you have to get them reconditioned again to the sun so if you put them out from your house into the sun immediately this is what's going to happen it's going to change color it's going to burn but then uh, once it get adjusted it'll grow back to green and then the new leaves will be fine so uh, if you see that and uh, just know that that's what's happening your your plants is getting sun damage but uh, it, it won't kill it okay so here is the original plants and i need to separate these babies guys there are just so many i just don't have anywhere to put them so these there's like about 20 in here and maybe 20 in there uh more than 20 for sure in there see the leaves are enormous so you have to separate the babies for the mother plants to grow big if you don't they will share they will share resources and the baby will suck all of the energy from the parent and the parent will just remain the same so if you remove the baby look at this look how big this leaves is like the size of my hand and it does get bigger than this you see now the babies are sprouting out so i need to wait a little bit and separate them so even in small containers they can get very big if you don't allow the baby to grow like this so this is bad right here so take out all the babies remove them and you see here are the babies that i've separated last season and I overwinter you see they're getting sunburn but this one is fine because it got adjusted so uh, yeah that is another plant that I always have to grow I love aloe and I love all the plants that I mentioned in this video and uh, of course I always grow peppers so the peppers uh, series is still continuing so it'll be coming up on the, the next uh, episode so uh, keep an eye out for that but that is all guys and uh, I hope that helps and uh, you can see how beautiful some of these plants are and why I love to grow them thank you so much for watching please like comment and subscribe